Today I will challenge three paddle coaches to a 1v1, each coach increasing in difficulty as we climb up the UK paddle rankings. My goal is to beat all three coaches and I'm going to be using three different paddle strategies against them. My first opponent is Jigo, he's ranked 110 in the UK, his paddle game is strong but let's just say his enthusiasm isn't quite on the same level. My name's Harry Jiggins, I'm 19 years old and I've been playing paddle for three and a half years. And after a spin of the racket, it was me to serve first, my first opponent. Let's go. And the match begins. I was trying to stick to my plan of playing consistent and solid, not going for any big shots too early on. The strategy I'm using against Jigo is the consistent strategy. The aim is to play solid, controlled paddle and let him make the mistakes for me. Got a bit of fortune here as the ball rolled off the glass, but I will take it, one nil to me. I was trying to play a simple pattern of ground strokes, then lob, then ground stroke, then lob to try and move Jigo backwards and forwards to create space. So far, the plan was working. As well as the consistent strategy, I was trying to use the simple strategy, which is to simplify the game and just focus on keeping the net position, moving Jigo around and getting good length on my shots. One key tip to help with this strategy is to focus on trying to win the net position rather than the point. This change of mindset helps consistency and creates better positions for you. Jigo was putting some great pressure on me at the net. I kept trying to lob to force my way back into the point. I set it up nicely but make a huge mistake as I hit the net. 2-1. I think Jigo's strategy was to be aggressive at the net. Every time I lobbed him, he would push back in and try and rush and try and battle for that net position. I knew I needed a change of pace in the game, so the ball set up nicely for me. I then go for the big kick smash to change the pace. Wasn't great, but it still bounced awkwardly for Jigo as I go 4-1 up. The next point is a perfect example of the consistency strategy in play. I stay patient, keep playing good volleys with good length, strong bandekas, not trying to win the point, but keeping the pressure on. And then look, the mistake comes. Jigo plays fantastically in this next point, moving me around with attacking combinations, different speeds, different angles, and not letting me have the net position. I had to play a lob on that last ball, a stupid mistake to play the ground stroke, and I let Jigo back in the game. Jigo tried to rush the net on this next point, so I focused on placement, pushing a forehand volley towards the cage and giving myself a match point. Strong plays from Jigo here as he pushes the ball into the corner. I lift it up, instinctively start running forward expecting the smash and then he backhand volleys it into the cage, bringing himself back into the game. Sorry for the brightness on this next clip, the sun went in outside. As Jigo keeps pushing, he plays a backhand volley to the cage and then an overhead to the cage as well. It bounces awkwardly and I can't quite get the ball to come centrally. Jigo is not going down without a fight as he brings the score back to 6-4. And there it is, a 7-4 victory after a gruelling tiebreak. It was close, but the consistency strategy paid off. My next opponent has the nickname Big Spanish Man. At number 39 in the UK, Gonzo is very hard to lob and he has a lot of power. This one will be tough. My name is Gonzo or Gonzalo. Uh, I'm from Spain and I'm playing paddle for 13 years. For this match against Gonzo, we're playing first to four games. We each get to serve, and if it goes 4-4, we'll do a tie break to seven. And here we go, the second match begins. Let's go, come on. Gonzo's serve is like a bullet. It flies at you with speed, spin, and straight into the side wall. Jesus Christ. I had to choose whether to try and block it before or do a 360 spin to get it back. And it was putting me under so much pressure early on in the point. On my serve, one of my favorite things to do is to serve down the tee, then play a volley to the corner, and then another volley back down the middle again. 
This serve again, I play another ball down the tee. So then when the ball comes up, I play the bandeka towards the side wall and then the next volley goes straight down the middle. The sun was right above us, so for every high ball, you would just lose it straight away and it was a lot easier just to let it bounce. It became hard to really keep the net position for a long time because after one easy lob, it would be better for us just to let the ball bounce. I eventually get a volley on my backhand where I play a little bit more aggressive with more spin towards the corner. My strategy against Gonzo was to try and play lots of Chiquitas towards his feet and then rush the net. I felt like I've got slightly stronger hands with him and because of Gonzo's height, it's quite hard for him to get low and dig out the balls by his feet. I also thought this would slow the game down as I know Gonzo likes to play very hard, very fast and very aggressive. A dream start for me as I go 2-0 up. Now, Gonzo serve and I've clearly angered the man as look at the power and aggression he is playing with now. Smashing the ball out by three and giving me no chance. I knew I had to try and slow it down again so the next point I fake the Chiquita and then go for the big lob over Gonzo's head. Then try and play slow control volleys before setting up for the controlled smash. Gonzo now serving for his first game. He plays a deep volley. I just about managed to get the ball back. He plays another deep volley. Gonzo with another huge smash out by three and the score is now 2-1. He's back in the game. I was finally starting to adjust to the hotter conditions. Gonzo boasts off his own wall, but again, because of the temperature and the new balls, the ball flies out. 3-1 to me. Gonzo is serving to stay in this match. Try the Chiquita strategy again, Gonzo reads it. I tried the lob to try and push him to the back of the court, but again, Gonzo manages to maintain. He hits the net, I managed to get there, but his backhand volley is too strong. I needed that soft touch there to get that one over. Another match point though, I play it down the middle. I try and move Gonzo around. The ball set up really nicely for me to chop it straight down the middle, meaning Gonzo had to boast, but it was too short. And then I got to do the flat smash. Got a little bit of fortune off the cage, but that is it. You and wins 4-1. Nice, well done mate. Overall wasn't the best game. Rallies were a bit all over the place and definitely wasn't pretty. The conditions did not help at all, but I got the job done. On to my next opponent. My final opponent is Ethan, ranked number 19 in the UK and just 18 years old. He is one of the best young players in the country and his kick smash is a joke. Hi, my name is Ethan Bardo and I've been playing paddle for five years. All the crazy shit I did tonight, those will be the best memories. For the final match against Ethan, we're also doing first to four games. And just like before, if it goes to four all, we will do a tie break to seven. And you'd think after five days of kick smash training, I would be able to get the ball out, but it hits the cage and sets up Ethan for a smash straight at my body. Already the huge difference is I cannot get away with these big lobs that I'm playing with Ethan playing these absolutely ridiculous kick smashes. A terrible start as I go 1-0 down but it's my time to serve. Ethan's lobs were really nice as they had a tiny little bit of backspin on as well so when they bounced they didn't sit up nicely for me. They kind of stopped in the air which made it hard for me to attack them. With this game, I knew I needed that change of pace, so rather than playing the bandeka, I go for the smash, and again, because of the heat and the new balls, the ball flies forward. This is where my strategy really worked well. You can see me moving Ethan from left to right, go down the middle, then back across, then back down the middle again, and eventually move Ethan out the way to create the space to win the point. I was trying to play short backhand volleys down the middle so that Ethan has to run over quickly and it would create space for me to attack. Yeah. However, Ethan's footwork is so good. He's fast and covers so much ground quickly. So it wasn't as effective as I wanted it to be. This shot here I caught completely wrong. I was trying to play a slow Chiquita with a little bit of slice into the space, but on a golden point, I messed it up and Ethan now leads 2-0. Ethan serving first and then breaking my serve put me on the back foot straight away. 
I had to be super solid and not do anything stupid, otherwise this game will go away from me. I was trying to play high lobs to slow the game down and give me time, but oh my god, Ethan's smash was an absolute joke in this game. Not even much power, he was just generating so much top spin and the ball was just flying out. At 3-0 down, things were not looking good at all. Like, this game really just went away from me early on, I think because Ethan served first and then he broke me and then obviously he just held his serve and instantly I felt like I was really fighting a losing battle. I was absolutely determined to win this serve as I play a little bit more aggressive and really target that corner. I think I was playing to the middle a little bit too much. So by playing more aggressive and playing to that corner, forcing him to use his backhand. I won my service game and maybe there's a small chance for a comeback. The mistake I'm making with the lobs I'm playing to Ethan here is they're too high and they're giving him a lot of time to get in the right position so that he can kick the ball out and it was actually helping him. That's a joke. Another ridiculous kick smash from Ethan as he gets his first match point. A terrible lob and Ethan smashes down the middle and wins. So there it is, Ethan is the winner and I beat only two out of the three coaches. My strategy wasn't right for Ethan and I made too many mistakes with giving him the easy lobs. Let me know down in the comments below what you think I could have done against Ethan to win. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and leave any other video suggestions down in the comments below.